Hello, 7th graders. Welcome to TV High, the school on the air program of Tagum City National High School. We are glad to be with you in this new normal journey of schooling through radio broadcast. This is your teacher host, Teacher Yvette Antoinette D. Villarosa. Now, get yourself ready as we explore new and exciting lessons about the Mindanao Architecture, Sculpture, and Functional Art, a lesson particularly in Grade 7 MAPE, Quarter 3, Lesson 2. Before we begin, I would like you to get your modules, your notebook, and your pen, and be comfortably seated at the comfort of your homes. For today's episode, the topic will be brought to us by our teacher broadcaster, Teacher Lin Jan. K. Kanyete from Tagum City National High School. Good day, Grade 7. How do you do? I hope you are all safe while listening to our program. I am so grateful that despite this pandemic, we can still reach and teach you the skills you need to learn in life. Are you now ready to learn something today? That's great! Here are our learning objectives for today. Towards the end of our episode, you will be able to First, reflect on the derived mood, idea, or message emanating from selected artifacts and art objectives. Second, appreciate the artifacts and art objectives in terms of its utilization and their distinct use of art elements and principles. Third, shows the relationship of the development of crafts in specific areas of the country according to functionality, traditional specialist expertise, and availability of resources. Example, pottery, weaving, jewelry, and basketry. Before we explore the architecture, sculpture, and functional arts of Mindanao, let's have first an activity. Identify each picture whether it is an architecture or sculpture. Are you ready? Let's begin. The first picture is an ancestral house of the upper class Maranao. Yes, correct, architecture. The second picture, an earthen wheel vessel for secondary burial. Yes, sculpture. Let's have the third picture. It was built to protect the people from pirates of the Sulu Sea. Correct, architecture. And lastly, we have boat houses or houses on stilts around the Sulu archipelago. Good job! It is architecture. Good job, students! Now let's begin to learn our topic for today. Mindanao is known as the second largest and southernmost island in the Philippines. It is also called the Land of Promise. It is the only geographical area of the Philippines with a significantly large Muslim presence from the Bajau, Iranon, Jama Mapun, Kalagan, Kalibugan, Subanen who are converted to Islam, Manubu, Maguindanao, Sama Pangaturan, Samal, Sangil, Tausug, and Yakans Group. Those who have maintained their indigenous beliefs and traditions instead of converting to Islam or Christianity are the Lumads. Some group of Lumad in Mindanao are the Bagubus and Tibulis. Mindanao also has famous architecture, sculpture, and distinct functional arts that display the richness of their culture and traditions. Let's explore some of Mindanao's famous architecture. First, we have 
Turugan, an ancestral house of the upper class Maranao. It is a dwelling place of the Datu along with his wives and children. There could not be any house larger than this of the Datu within the Sultanate, for this signifies rank, prestige, and wealth. The National Museum has declared the Maranao Turugan, specifically the Kawayan Turugan, as one of the National Cultural Treasures through Museum Declaration Number 4-2008. The second architecture is the Panulung, a wing-like ornament of Turugan flaring out from the beams. This okir carving usually features the naga or serpent, pakurabung or stylized fern, as well as a floral and star and bud motifs. Third, Bajau's houses are both houses or houses on stilt around the Sulu archipelago. The Bajau, also known as Sama Bajau, are the sea gypsies or nomads of the Sulu Sea. Their main source of livelihood is fishing and hunting. Fourth, the Grand Mosque of Cotabato, the largest mosque in the Philippines. The Sultan Haji Hassanal Bolkeya Masjid, or also known as the Grand Mosque, sitting near the idle banks of the Tamuntaka River, is founded by the Philippine government of the Sultan of Brunei, for whom the masjid was named. The mosque occupies 5,000 square meters of 5 hectare land. The four minarets stand at a towering 43 meter high, more or less 15 story building. Fifth, Fort Pilar of Zamboanga. The historical Fort Pilar, also called Real Fuerza de Nuestra Señora del Pilar de Zaragoza, was founded in 1635 and still stands strong until today. It was engineered by Father Melchor de Vera, a Jesuit priest. It was built to protect the people from pirates of the Sulu Sea. Lastly, the Monastery of Transfiguration of Bukidnon. The monastery is located atop of the hill of Malaybalay, Bukidnon, founded by Father Abbot Eduardo Africa and run by the Benedictine monks. The pyramid-like structure was designed by the National Artist of, for Architecture, Leandro Luxin. It is one of the last designs and considered as one of the best. Aside from the cultural center of the Philippines and Davao International Airport. Now let us explore some sculpture of Mindanao. First, Maitum Char, an earthenware vessel for secondary burial from Sarangani Province. These artifacts were first covered in 1991 and now in the protection of the National Museum. Some experts argue that these jars are not only artistically significant, they also hold key information and historical and anthropological importance. Second, Tibuli wood carving and brass casting and pottery. Wood carvers get their inspiration from the wildlife in their local area. Artisans use the lost wax casting method to produce more copies of sculptures with intricate designs such as bells, boxes, and figures. Mold is made from wax, then using this mold, covers it with clay. Molten brass is then poured into the clay cast 
which melts and replaces the wax to form the finished product. Lastly, Maranao wood carving and metal casting. First, Rarub Aklong is a metallic armor made of brass plates, carabao horn, and interlocking ringlets. It is the protective armor of Moro warriors as a counterpart to the vest used by the Spanish soldiers. Second, Campilan is a single-edged steel sword with a handle made of hand-carved ivory in a form of head of the naga or serpent, handcrafted gold, and hang horse hair at the bottom of the handle. Third, Batige is a large manually carved wooden top inlaid with mother of pearl. It is used by adult males to test their skills and strength. Fourth, candy is a heirloom teapot or kettle used for hot water, coffee, or tea. Lastly, gador is a large intricate decorated white metal tobacco container. It has become an item of interior decoration in proper Maranao households. Are you now ready to explore the functional arts of Mindanao? That's great! Now let's begin! The Balanghai, also known as Balangay or Butuan Boat, is a large wooden boat used by the pre-colonial Filipinos to traverse the seas for trade or migration. It was first mentioned in the 16th century in the Chronicles of Pegafetta and is known as the oldest pre-Hispanic watercraft found in the Philippines. Archaeologists found parts of the Balangay in Butuan City in 1976. These artifacts are dated from anywhere between 322 to 1250 CE. They are estimated to measure 15 meters long and 3 to 4 meters wide, propelled by the sail of buri or nipa fiber or padding, and hold 60 to 90 people. It was used for cargo and riding purposes, serving as evidence that Butuan played as a central role in trade. The finely built boat, constructed without the use of blueprints, was thought from one generation to another. This technique is still used by boat makers of Cebutu Island and Vinta. This boat is traditionally made by the Bajaus who lived in the Sulu archipelago. The sail, called Vinta, consists of several colors and geometric shapes representing the colorful culture and history of the Muslim people. These boats are small and are meant to be used for long ocean travel. They are used for livelihood activities such as fishing and diving for pearls and transportation around the archipelago. Now that we have done with our discussion, I hope that you have great time listening and watching the different samples of architecture, sculpture, and functional arts of Mindanao. Let us test what you have learned from our topic today. This activity is called Name the Picture. I will be showing a picture and you will name it. Are you ready? Picture number one. This boat is traditionally made by the Bajaus. Correct, Vinta. The next picture, this is an ancestral house of the upper class Maranao. 
Wow! Turugan! Picture number three, boat houses or houses on stilt around the Sulu archipelago. Yes, Bajau houses. Last, it is a wing-like ornament of Turugan flaring out from the beams. Correct, Panulung. Wow, good job students! Now, let us have an assessment to measure what you have learned throughout the session. Are you all ready? Please prepare your quiz paper now and fill out the important information. Do not forget to write your name and section. Also, write the episode number in your paper, Quarter 3, Episode 2. I hope you got all the instruction correctly. This will serve as your quiz for today. This is a multiple choice exam. Make sure you answer it honestly. Okay? So, I will be reading the question and the choices twice. Are you all set? Let's begin. Number one, the ancestral house of the upper class Maranao. It is the dwelling place of Datu along with his wives and children. A. Turugan B. Panulong C. Pakurabung and D. Turugan The ancestral house of upper class Maranao. It is the dwelling place of the Datu along with his wives and children. A. Turugan B. Panulong C. Pakurabung D. Turugan The correct answer is letter A. Turugan Number 2 An ornament of the Maranao house that has carvings of serpent, floral, and star and bad motif A. Turugan B. Panulung C. Flora D. Bayong An ornament of the Maranao house that has carvings of serpent, floral, and star and bad motif. A. Turugan B. Panulung C. Flora D. Bayong The correct answer is letter B. Panulung. Number 3. The Sultan of Brunei for whom the Grand Mosque of Cotabato was named. A. Salihuddin B. Abdul Halim C. Haji Hasanal Bolkeya Masjid D. Ali Baba bin Bello The Sultan of Brunei for whom the Grand Mosque of Cotabato was named. A. Salihuddin B. Abdul Halim C. Haji Hasanal Bolkeya Masjid D. Alibaba bin Bello The correct answer is letter C. Haji Hasanal Bolkeya Masjid Number 4 An earthenware vessel for secondary burial from Sarangani Province A. Maitum Jar B. Manunggul Jar C. Bantun Burial D. Kadangyan Burial An earthenware vessel for secondary burial from Sarangani Province A. Maitum Jar B. Manunggul Jar C. Bantun Burial D. Kadangyan Burial The correct answer is letter A, Maitum Jar. Number 5. It is a small, narrow outrigger known for its decorative rectangular sails and creative hull design. A. Balanghai B. Vinta C. Gador D. Candy It is a small, narrow outrigger known for its decorative rectangular sails 
and creative hall design. A. Balanghay B. Vinta C. Gador D. Candy The correct answer is letter B. Vinta I hope that you have learned an interesting lesson from our discussion today. We assure you that no matter what challenges we are going through, still learning continues. Till next time, this is your teacher broadcaster, Teacher Lin Jan. Goodbye! Wow! A very interesting topic indeed. Thank you, Teacher Lin Jan. Thank you, students and listeners, for tuning in. Hope you learned something today. Stay tuned for our next session here at TV High, the School on the Air program of Tagum City National High School. This is your radio host, Teacher Yvette. Makisabay, matuto, at maglakbay dito sa TV High. Keep safe, everyone, and have a great day ahead. Hi